<clears throat> okay, I'm going to stall for a few minutes and see if I can get a link to put on here real quick. My Facebook is live now. Okay, yay. Uh, let's get the link. Copy link. Okay. Copy link. Okay. And post it. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. There it is. Okay. You can fast forward this part here. There. <clears throat> okay. So now I will get started. And I really, really, really hate the fact that because I share the truth that the fa fake media, the fake, um, fake checkers, um, have put me way down in the everybody's uh, stream. So I don't. You'll probably not be watching this live. You most likely will be watching this um, later on. Okay, so um, I'm going to attempt to do some YouTube lives and see if that works. But I want to do the stream interpretation that Jesus gave me last night. He gave me a dream, and then immediate after. Immediately afterward, afterwards, he told me how to interpret the dreams with seven questions to ask yourself and to seven, seven um, steps to interpret the dream. So I thought, wow, this is amazing. I got to share this. This is really good. So I'm going to start by sharing the dream and then I'm going to tear it down and show you how God told me to tear it down. And then the seven questions that you need to ask yourself about a dream and the seven steps that you need to do. So this was a dream. There was a mouse, a rabbit, and a bird under my vehicle. I needed to move my vehicle. So I took a broom and I swooshed them out from under my vehicle. And they all left. Okay. So that's a simple dream. And this is the first thing you ask yourself is why did I want, why? Okay. Why did I want to move? Why did I want to get the mouse, the, the mouse, the rabbit, and the bird? out from underneath my vehicle well i want it to move the vehicle okay in in um dreams your vehicle almost always is uh, interpreted 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 as your ministry okay what did i use to get them out from under the vehicle so the question is what did i use i used a broom what else this is a key question. What else could have I used? Well, I didn't use a, a garden hose. I didn't use a rock. I didn't use a tree branch. I didn't use a two by four. I didn't use a rake. So all those things could have been used. So, but I used a broom. So the broom is significant. It means something. Okay. Then I asked myself, what function does a broom do? A broom sweeps up, cleans up, and um, it, it sweeps things out. It cleans things up. And uh, so that gave me another clue. Then I asked what, what was under the car? Okay, a mouse, a bird, and a rabbit. So what do these three things mean to me? Okay, well, first of all, I love all animals. They're, they're all cute. I don't like any of them to be killed. Um, I'm, now that I'm living in the desert, I'm experiencing these three animals more than any other animal's more than I have ever experienced these animals before in my life. Okay. So I'm experiencing them now in my life in the desert. The other thing they have in common, all three of them are totally harmless in themselves. And they were preventing me from moving my vehicle. Okay. So what, so I asked myself, what could have been under my vehicle? Well, it could have been a snake. It could, it could have been a scorpion. 
I could have had a centipede, a, a javelina. I could have had a deer. I could have had any of those things under my car. But none of those things were under my car. It was a mouse, a rabbit, and a bird. So the mouse, the rabbit, and the bird were significant. Okay, so what do these, what do these animals have in common? They're harmless. They're cute. I'm experiencing them right now in this time of, of that I live in, where I live. My cats bring in mice. They chase them. They let them loose. They chase them. They catch them. My cats eat harmless rabbits, and I get upset about that because I like my rabbits and I pray for them. We feed the birds in the bird feeder and enjoy watching them daily. So all these three things are things that um, are part of my life right now. Okay, so I have to think, what do these animals represent? Well, first of all, what do they represent? Well, the first thing I thought about was the bird... The first thing I thought about was, let me see if I go over this later. Um, okay, what does each of these animals represent? I'll go over that later. When they left, when these animals, these three animals, three, when they left, how did they leave? They left immediately, and the bird flew, the rabbit hopped, and the mouse ran. Three different important things. Okay. So each one exited different, one by flying, one by running, and one by hopping. How did they, how did the sweeping, okay, uh, thinking about the, the sweeping motion, who did this, who did the sweeping? I did, so the dream is about me. I, I couldn't move, I, why was it important that I swept them out? Because I couldn't move the vehicle. They, they left, okay, so why? Why, who did the sweeping? I did the sweeping. So what did I discover so far about the dream? I couldn't move the vehicle unless I got rid of the animals underneath because I didn't want to run them, run away with them. Um, and when they did leave, they left quickly. They left the first time I swept them out. They each left differently. And they had different modes of transportation. And I was the one that was responsible for sweeping out the mice, the rabbit, and the bird. And they were removed my okay so what i learned from this so far is i i removed my problems by sweeping them out from under my ministry because vehicle uh, is interpreted as a ministry and they were removed i couldn't move ahead until i removed these things so so summary what what did the bird the mouse and the rabbit um mean to me now you don't want to go look it up in a bible dictionary or in the world dictionary unless you can't figure it out what did a mouse mean to me a mouse was something that was um, annoying because it was it, it would my cats would bring it in drop it a live one and then chase it and we have to throw everything aside and spend all the time looking for it it would take up our time uh, bird what does a bird mean to me? Well, the birds are something that I feed. The birds are something that I enjoy listening to their wings flap. The birds um, have uh, different meanings. But also the first thing that came to my mind was uh, about a bird and a curse. Okay. And what does a rabbit mean? A rabbit to me was something cute and cuddly and harmless. But my cats would eat them and then leave half the rabbit out here. And I hated that because rabbits were so cute. Um, so I'm not really sure what the rabbit sig signified in, at this point in the dream, except for the possibility, uh, oh, yes, that's right, I do remember, um, a rabbit is indecisive, it hops back and forth, it changes its mind, it deters from its original path because it's always hopping, okay, so that's what, it, so the mouse meant a curse, I mean, the bird meant a curse, the mouse meant little, in, um, uh, would take attention away from things and the rabbit was chasing back and forth so i had to figure out what that meant to me then what could have let's see then i go over um then i go to asking these are the seven questions that you need to ask yourself in any dream okay first one is who who is doing the action is it you or are you watching or is it someone else 
Okay, that, that shows you who the problem belongs to. That might show you who the problem belongs to. Then you have to ask what. Now you're going to ask these questions all the way through. You're going to say, who is that person? How do they relate to me? Who is the dream about? So you ask these questions. What? What is the dream about? Take it down to its simplest um, uh, simplest form. But first, before you do that, I want you to know I want you to know something. Dreams that are very confusing and that go this direction and that direction and don't actually make any sense. And when you wake up, it's like, huh, that's confusing. Those are not dreams that need to be interpreted. The dreams that need to be interpreted, when you wake up, you will say, huh, I wonder what that meant. And certain things that happen in that dream will stick to you. They'll, you'll, um, you'll be bothered. You'll want to, you'll want to uh, interpret it. Almost every, I never interpreted dreams before until a couple years ago. And I didn't actually learn how. I just would wake up and I knew this was a dream to interpret. And I just start thinking. It's the same way I do scriptures. I meditate on one word at a time and ask the Holy Spirit to pull it together. So, so dreams do not need to be interpreted that make no sense, that, that are full of confusion and that you, you don't even know how to say what they were about. You can't break it down to the simplest form because it was here and there. It was everywhere. It was like 10 different dreams all together. Okay. So don't even bother wasting your time on that. Okay. So these are the seven things that you need, seven questions you need to ask about every part all the way through the dream is who, who did the action? Who's the, who is the video? Who is the dream about? Um, who's getting results from uh, the action that's happening and so on. Then you ask what, what's happening? Uh, what's happening to who it's hap who is it happening to when is it happening like where when, in, what, what time of the day uh, um, to what um, when is it happening is it in the morning afternoon evening is it happening after something happened or before something important happened then you ask why okay why the why in every part of the dream why then you ask how then another thing when you ask how ask um, how is it not happening? What, like what, when I looked under the, the vehicle and it had a rabbit, a bird and a mouse, it could have been a snake. I say, what was not under the bus? Well, it wasn't a snake. It wasn't a scorpion. It wasn't a turtle. It wasn't a, a javelina. You know, it, it wasn't those things. It was those three animals. So they had significance. What was it? in the dream what could have happened what could have it been like i just said and what does these things mean to me why did it do that and what was the result okay so the the first thing you do is you ask the seven questions are who what when why how um where and number seven the goal what was the goal of the dream was it trying my goal of my dream was trying to sweep the goal of my dream was to move my vehicle but the problem was there were animals under my vehicle and i loved them and i didn't want to run over them so i had to get rid of them so the goal was to move my vehicle okay so those seven questions are the questions you need to ask at every part and section of your dream and if you didn't see the video from the beginning go back and i'll, I'll take you through the steps that god took me through with a simple dream I had last night. So it's you ask these questions every part of the way. The seven questions are who, what, when, why, how, where, and what is the goal. Okay. Then these are the these are the seven steps to interpreting the dream. Number one, forget uh, forget the cluttered dreams. The cutter clutter dreams that are all messed up and make absolutely no sense that you can't even put in the most simplest form what the dream is about number two ask the holy spirit to help you interpret the dream and ask him that's number three ask him to help you interpret the dream number two is ask him to help you get all the things that you need to know all the understanding of each piece of the dream that you need to have to interpret ask him to show you what it is in the dream you need to interpret because there were a few other things in this dream that that i interpret 
that were insignificant, that, that didn't really mean anything. Okay, so ask the Holy Spirit. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit to help you interpret it. Number four, break it down into the simplest message possible. What was the goal? What was the simplest message possible? In this dream, it was to move my vehicle. Okay. The number five, analyze. This is really, really important. Analyze each verb. What was the action? What, who, what, where? Ask those seven questions of every verb. Ask number six, analyze every noun and what it means to you. Ask those seven questions. Who, what, where, when, why, how, with a goal. Every part of the dream. So you analyze the verb and the noun. And number seven is decide if there is events happening in your life right now. Problems or circumstances or situations happening in your, in your world right now in your life that has anything to do with the dream. Okay. So those are the seven steps to interpreting the dream. Ask who, what, when, why, how, where, and what the goal of the dream is. And you do this every step along the way. The seven steps to interpret the dream is forget about cluttered, mixed up dreams and only interpret the dreams that you feel led to interpret. Okay, number two, ask the Holy Spirit who is your teacher of all things to tell you what you need to know to interpret the dream. Number three, ask the Holy Spirit to help you interpret it. Number four, break down to the simplest message, the whole dream. The simplest message. What is the simplest message if you had to say it in three sentences? Okay. Number five, analyze each verb. Everything, every, a verb is what shows action. Analyze each thing. What does it do? What does it not do? Okay, number six, analyze each noun. Okay, what does it mean to me? Okay, and then number seven, decide if there's a question you're asking God about the Bible, a problem, a situation, a circumstance, an event, something that's stressing you that is happening in your life that relates to the stream, and that way you will have the answer. Okay, so that is the seven... That's the seven steps to interpreting a dream and seven questions to ask to interpret a dream. Now, if you go through that and if you go back to the front of the video, you'll see the dream I had, simple dream, and how God took me through all the how, what, where, why questions on that. Okay, so now comes the time for my advertisement. If this video is a blessing to you, please share it with your social media groups, with your friends, with your Facebook post messengers, messengers, uh, share it. I also want to tell you about another video I have, which I just posted on Facebook. I have like something like 24,000 hits on it. And it is, it is the four easy steps to going to the courts of heaven. Now that's a really, really popular and really good. I get lots of comments on it. Really good video. I would suggest that you go and watch that video too. Okay. My other commercial is, is if you are an author, uh, I publish books for only $399. Uh, they have to be family safe books. They don't have to be Christian books. They just have to be family safe books. Excuse me. And um, you can check on my website. It includes everything I publish on the Amazon platform. I publish it into a Kindle book and a paperback book. I do everything except copy editing. That's correcting spe spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Because I am a hick from the sticks. I am terrible at spelling. You'll probably hear me enunciate some words very wrong as I share what I share. So that I have people that I hire to do that. And that is available to you. Now, the other thing is I'm going to turn this around. I'm also an artist. And if you want to uh, support my ministry, because I give away a lot of books, I give away paintings and I spend lots of time, you know, interceding over these paintings. Um, you can buy one of my paintings or you can just donate to the ministry, but rather you buy a painting. Um, anyway, I paint because I want, the camera just can't picture the glory and the beauty of nature of what God has created. And so I started painting about a year ago and I love to paint. It, it's just so stress relieving. It's like I'm there in the picture. I only paint what I love, what I enjoy looking at. 
And so I pray over every one of my paintings. And I believe like Paul who took cloths and put it against his body and that people got those cloths and they were healed. And when the shadow went across people, they were healed. Well, I believe that my paintings are portals to heaven. I believe when people look at my paintings or buy my paintings, that they will have a portal to heaven, that they will receive healing, salvation, deliverance, prosperity, wisdom, peace, whatever it is they need. They will receive the love of God. They will begin to um, be drawn to God. So I suggest that if you have anyone you need getting saved, buy one of my pictures, pray over it, send it to them as a Christmas gift. Okay. Um, so I'm going to um, flip my camera around to show you some of the paintings. Now I have, I have 13 paintings in a shop in uh, locally. I, it's Elvira, I think it's called. And I have three paintings in Tucson at the Raptor, Raptor Cafe. And then all the rest of the paintings, I painted probably close to 300 paintings so far. I, I gave away the first 200 paintings. Okay. Gave them away. Um, now the, this, and painting supplies are expensive. Now the ones that I have left here, I'm going to show you pictures of the ones I have left. And I, one of them was just sold today. So I'll tell you which ones so you can't buy that. But here's another secret. If you want any of my paintings and you can't afford my paintings, you can go on to my Etsy, not my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is for novelty items like shirt, like um, posters and things, uh, posters and puzzles and cards and stuff like that. But my art pal link to my art is my originals and you can get prints there for like $6.99 of any of the things that I have painted and posted up there. So if you can't afford my painting, my paintings, my, my greeting cards start at $10 hand painted greeting cards. Um, and then my paintings go up uh, $35 and up to about 95 right now. As long as supply and demand lasts, lasts when supply and demand is, I can't keep up, then the price goes up. But right now these are my prices. I try to keep them what I would pay, what I would feel fair to charge. And they're way below what I should be charging. But that's because I want to bless people. I want them to get saved, healed and delivered and set free. Also, if you cannot afford any of my books, this book, I will be doing a live video on in a few minutes. Uh, the tree of life. I'll be doing chapter four, the tree of death. How we've come to accept a lot of things that are not normal, as normal. I'll be doing a live video on that in a, probably in a few minutes. Um, if you cannot afford to buy my books, I'm giving away this one I just showed you. And the one on communion. Those two books will change your world. And I'm so positive that they will change your world. That I'm giving them away free. And the link will be on here. The link is also on my other live videos. So just go there and copy the link. Um, anyway, so I'm giving them away free as a PDF form. You cannot sell them, can't make money off them, but you can give them away to friends. Okay. Okay. So let me turn this around and God told me to pray before I go. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around and I am going to show you my pictures. Now this here picture is my absolute favorite picture I have ever painted in my whole life. I absolutely love this picture. It's for sale for $60. My husband says it should be 95. Well, it's on paper and um, it has a plastic covering on it to keep it safe uh, because on Friday I'm going out to um, tomorrow I'm going to a sidewalk sale and and uh, I have to protect it when I display my art okay so that one's sixty dollars that one is um, 18 by 12 paper okay then this other is my second favorite right there that's also sixty dollars that's also 18 by 12 and then this Merry Christmas one, that's 35. That's 30. This is um, Turkey Creek where I live. That's uh, 35. This is Annette's windmill. That's my neighbor's windmill that I painted. That's 35. And then I have over here the glory one. Um, that one I think is 45. I'm not sure. What size is that? Um, I don't I think that's 45. And then this one that you probably can't see real good, Hope. It's the Aurora Borealis with pine trees. Um, those are really popular. And that one, I believe, is 70. And, okay, this is the one that's sold. This one here is sold. Today I sold that one. This is one of my favorites. I love making deep sea um, pictures. It's so peaceful. This is another one of my favorites. This is on paper. Oh, this little one, this one... 
this no these are 45 well actually these are 45 including shipping and handling if you see me in person they are 35 okay if I okay this one I believe is 25 cardboard this is paper and this is uh, I don't know how much that is I have to look anyway these are birch trees and they're colorful and it's a different kind of art for me it's more of um, impressionist my art is more of realistic art so it's a little bit different so anyway this is my studio here so you can see my studio okay so just wanted to show that to you um, and do me a favor if this video is a blessing to you please share it with your social media sites your Facebook friends in um, Facebook Messenger and other social media sites uh, because I am not a starving artist because I do get Social Security but I can bless other people when I'm blessed and I just so so much love for people to get my paintings because I think they're beautiful <laughs> I'm, I'm prejudiced I think they're absolutely gorgeous and my whole goal was I wanted to take you to a place of a childhood memory or a, a, a place where you could look at it and have peace in this mess of the world that we're in right now so anyway so there there is my art and I'll put some links underneath this and thanks to all for sharing and I'm going to pray for you all father I just pray right now in Jesus name that you would bless everybody who um, sees this video with understanding and how to interpret their dreams to know that you are their teacher you said you would teach us all things and you would bring all things to our memory so father I thank you in Jesus name that as people dream that you would bring to their memory the things they need to remember about the dream the things that I taught and it would be an easy thing to interpret dreams it wouldn't be complicated it wouldn't be time consuming it wouldn't be frustrating and that through interpreting their dreams they would understand things that are happening in their life in the spirit realm what to do about it what the solution is how, how to solve problems and how to be blessed and I thank you father for that in Jesus name we'll talk to you later